Today guys, in the first ever episode of Red's FX Action, we're taking a look at lighting your videos, how you can better light your YouTube videos as well as your short films and as well, just taking a look at my setup over here. So, without further ado, um, uh, how do you do this? Let's go! Welcome to the very first ever episode of our brand new spin-off show, Red's FX Action. This is a spin-off of our original mother show, Red's FX. And in this show, guys, we're basically going to be doing everything that we don't do in Red's FX. So that includes pre-production, such as writing, scripting, planning, storyboards, etc. As well as production, the actual filming, lighting, cinematography, all sorts of fun stuff. I hope you guys are as excited for it as I am, because I'm buzzing right now. And speaking about production, our first of the episode is going to be about lighting, but specifically more aimed at YouTube lighting or lighting for a stand-up type of video like this, where I'm standing and talking to the camera. Now, I've had a lot of people ask me about my particular lighting setup, which I will be showing later on in the video, so stay tuned for that. But I've also have been asked a few times uh, recommendations for lighting, what I can use for light, how good is natural light, how to use natural light. And basically, how do I get my video looking more professional and looking more appealing to the eye instead of looking like it was filmed out of a potato, even though I have a really good camera. And unfortunately, that is a big problem with lighting. A lot of people will go out and think that they, all the lighting problems will be solved by buying a really good camera. So they'll save up their money and they'll go buy like a Panasonic camera or a Canon camera or a Sony DSLR or something like that. And they'll plonk it on the tripod, they'll set it up, make everything look good. And when they start recording, they realize it still looks like it's being lit by an alleyway at night in Gotham City. Did your, did your balls drop off? Hmm? What you don't realize is that lighting plays a huge part in how your videos look. For example, just by adding a couple of LED lamps, maybe angling the sun at the right place, filming at the right time of day, all these things heavily contribute to how good your image looks and how you attract your viewers to the screen and make them glued at your face, which is always a good thing, let's be honest. Now, I am not a master. I'm, as you can see, this is probably a very average setup compared to other people. I do not know everything about this, but I thought that I do know. I've made a lot of mistakes, definitely made a lot of mistakes, and I th thought that through me making those mistakes, maybe I can teach you guys something from my experiences personally, and hopefully you won't make as many of the same mistakes as I made. You definitely will make mistakes. It's part of the process, it's part of life, but through mistakes, we can tune it, fine tune it, and eventually become Steven Spielberg. Okay, that's probably not gonna happen, but let's continue on. So first we're gonna do is we're gonna go over a few tips for lighting your videos, and then we're gonna take a look at my setup, and then we'll wrap this all up. So, let's get into those tips. Now tip number one is first of all, before you go out and buy anything, before you start grabbing lamps from your mom's bedside table, first look at what you have and what you can use. Now number one, the main thing, and the one that is free for everyone, is our good pal, the sun. Now the sun is a really good um, source of natural light, obviously, it's the main source, the only source of natural light we have, and we can use that to our advantage. Now there are upsides and there are downsides to using the sun, so let's quickly go over a couple of those. Now the biggest upside to using the sun is of course that it's free, it's constant, and it's there during the entire day. Now that's basically the only upside to it, is that it's free and it's easily accessible. There are quite a few downsides, but if it's your only resource, you can definitely make these downsides turn into upsides if you play your cards right. I'm sorry, that last hand. Killed me. So a few of the downsides is that the sun is always not very constant. Now the sun is constant itself, but there are little bullies called clouds that like to pass in front of the sun. And a big problem I had, especially in my older videos, before I was using um, LED lamps and lights and stuff, when I was mainly just using the sun, is that clouds would pass in front of the sun and obscure it for a few seconds. And what you don't realize is that this is happening all through your entire video. So I could be talking and the sunlight is changing and the intensity of the light is changing, my aperture is remaining the same and all my settings are remaining the same and therefore everything is becoming darker and lighter. So afterwards when you jump into the editing suite and you start editing it and you're putting all those jump cuts in, you may use other methods to con 
to like sort of uh, conceal those jump cuts like zooming in and stuff like most of us do but you will realize that the light is changing in between those jump cuts and you have different levels of exposure in your shots and that can be a real pain to edit out especially with adding in curves effects and brightness and contrast just to pump it up and make it not look so different but at the end of the day it really sticks out and it's very 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 hard to convincingly sell that you're covering up these effects so that is a main one of the main downsides to the sun so to recap upside it's free downside it's not always constant due to those bullies known as clouds now a few things you can do to make sure the sun stays constant is you can film on a particular day now what you want to do is maybe look outside for example right now i have this window right next to me open because i want the natural light to come in and hit my face all smooth and nice but the reason i'm doing this is because it's a cloudy day outside now you may think wait didn't you say clouds are bad clouds are bad but only if there are only a few of them if there's clouds everywhere and the entire sky is obscured by clouds that means the sun is going to stay at a constant temperature or a constant um, setting. Whereas if there are only a few clouds and there are streaks of blue and patches of blue, the clouds might move in front, the clouds might move behind, and they'll just obscure it and change the levels. Whereas if it's just cloudy, constant. So that is natural light basically in a nutshell. It's free, it's cool to use, although it can mess up your shot if you don't time it correctly. Now, moving on, we have bought lamps or LEDs. Now there are two categories in these. There are these, there are those lights that are specifically made for photography and filmmaking, and there are lights that are used around the house. For example, as you'll see later on right over there, I have a household lamp that I just use in my bedroom at night when it gets a bit too dark and scary. Um, and you can use that easily to light your videos, but I also have LED lamps that I bought online. You don't have to get really expensive ones although there are two main things you want to look for when buying an LED lamp. The number one thing you want to look for is the CRI value. Now this may be a bit daunting at first and you may be thinking I don't want to learn all these new terms but just let me put it at a nutshell for you. I also was scared about this at first and I didn't want to know all these things but at a, in a nutshell in the most easiest of terms CRI is basically the value that makes sure your light is constantly white. So if you have a really high CRI, like 90 and above, which I don't think you should drop below 90, you're going to have a pretty cool crystal white light that makes it look really, really nice. Although if you have a lower CRI, you'll notice that your light is not pure white and it's leaning more towards greenish tints or purplish tints. Normally it's one of those, maybe it's blue or green or something like that. And they don't really look quite nice and they end up looking a bit yucky and looks like you're lighting in front of some... I don't know, the back of some cheap dyno or something. So you really don't want to buy a light that has a low CRI value. And a lot of the times I made the mistake myself, my first LED that I bought had a really low CRI value. Also note this, if it's not noted, if it doesn't show the CRI value on the package or on the website you're buying it from, don't buy it because it has a really crap CRI value then. That is one big pile of shit. Normally with these lights, they are just as expensive as the ones that have a high CRI value, but they don't have the same output. So remember, CRI, if it's high, it's good. Over 90, get it. If it doesn't show, or if it's low, lower than 90, rather stay away and look for something else. So you'll see in a few minutes the lights I use, and I really found them on a good deal. Now you want to look around for these lights. Now there are some really big brands such as Aperture and stuff like that. Their lights could get a bit expensive if you really want those type of lights. I guess you could go for that, but I have a brand called Young Nuo. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. I don't know them. Young Nuo, if you want to uh, hit me up. And anyway, I don't know them or anything, but they do have really nice lights and they have high CRI values over 95. And um, I managed to pick these up on a really cool discount that was happening sometime last year or something like that, where I could, where they gave like two lights charging cables as well as light stands and everything so you want to look around for those type of values especially on amazon and stuff mine was through a local store but you may find those like that um yeah led lamps are really good you can get them at good prices check for that cri value make sure it's constant a lot of the times it'll come with a um what do you call it what, what do you call those things gels or filters that you put in front to change the color Fun stuff like that so to summarize lighting if you have lamps around the house if you have things that you can use to light maybe emergency lights definitely use those if you want to buy LED lights look for a good price because they're always discounted and going on sale especially make sure that the CRI value is nice and high over 90 and you should be good to go so before I jump into my main point which is how to arrange your lights and basically use it to its full potential to make sure that you're hitting yourself at the right angles, before we do that I want to quickly take the camera off the tripod which involves me changing the tripod to that Joby thing and 
a whole bunch of effort but I want to change it just so I can show you around so you know what I'm saying afterwards and you have a context for what I'm using and how mine works. So let's start at what I'm looking at. So as you can see, the camera would normally be over there. I'd be standing right over here and this is what I would see. Now, two things I want to point out right now. Before we jump into the lights basically, Right over here we'd have my microphone. Now my microphone right now is on top of the camera but otherwise it would be over here on this tripod and it would normally snake with a different cable into my iPad and record the sound on a sort of second device over there. Okay, now back to the lighting. Um, as you can see over here, we have the first light. I've got some nice lens flares going on actually. Um, this is my first light. Now, I will show you the back of it, then I jump to the second one, which is just over there. Um, don't mind the pants over there. Um, and the second light, as I mentioned, which now, actually let's just regroup quickly. This would be the key light, okay? This would be the key light, mainly lighting, um, lighting my face. Straight on, as I said, a bit more of a warmer color over there. And then second of all, we will have the um, background light. Now this is a window as I said, now this does have some natural light coming in, this sort of fills in the rest of the room. And remember I did say it's a bit dangerous to have this, although it is a cloudy day, I'm not sure if you can see, it's a cloudy day outside, so everything is nice and constant and perfect for using as a background light. Okay, so if I turn it on 360 degrees, you'll basically see the set over there, the Redsfix Action logo looking nice and sweet. Now something that is also here normally on the table that I can't really show you right now since I'm sort of using it, is I have my um, Joby Gorilla Pod normally right there on the table and I will have another light, one of my small lights that doesn't really, it's this one over here. That light, don't mind the mess again, I'm so sorry. That light over there, I would normally have over here just providing some sort of background light onto the um, set. But um, ignore that, that doesn't really sort of count, it's, very, it's a very minute little difference, although I do show it after this segment, so you can check that out. And then the sort of my favorite aspect of the lighting setup is this over here. Now this light over here is the same as this one over here, although this is what gives me that sort of nice outline on the side of my face. It's what's known as a sort of a uh, maybe a full light or a side light or something along that. Now all of these wires are all joining right here at this mess over here this dangerous dangerous mess <laughs> please do not do this kids and they all go over there so uh, just don't just make sure you have a fire extinguisher or something because if this goes wrong it goes wrong and then uh, let me actually show you behind this light if I can snake my way around all these wires okay so right behind this light as you can see young Newell and you have this little knob over here that you can use to change the intensity of the light and I also have here a switch that changes it to be a bicolor light. So if you look at the front of the light, this changes it to be more of a cool light or more of a warmer light. So you have a switch over here, 3200 Kelvin and a 5200 Kelvin, which changes the setting and obviously the knob to change this. And finally, the last light is this light over here, which is just a normal bedside lamp that I use to light, well, my room when I am at night and it's getting a bit dark and, and scary. So this light over here, He's a good boy. It reminds me of the Pixar lamp, actually. And this, what it's pointing at, if I turn it around, it's pointing at the set. It just basically helps fill it in a little bit more. And you see these little highlights over here? That is from the big guy over there. So if I turn that off, you'll see that all of that disappears. And basically, guys, that is my setup in a nutshell. One final little 360 twirl, starting at the starting point, going around. And yeah, we have it as is okay now that you've seen my setup let's talk about some key factors about lighting now there are basically a few things you want to know when lighting yourself especially yourself if you're lighting yourself a subject you want to use something called a three-point lighting method now this doesn't always work it doesn't always apply to the situation and you can definitely break this rule i break it almost every video but it's a good rule to have as a basis for you to stand on because remember if you don't have the support structure you'll fall down into the lake and get eaten by crocodiles so let's talk about the three-point lighting rule this basically is that you want to have three lights. One is called a key light. Now this is your main light. It's right here in front of me. If I block it out, you notice that it just, it doesn't look as good. The second light is called a fill light. Now this, as you can see, this little highlight that's along my side here, that's coming from the fill light over there that I showed you early on. And then finally, you don't really need to have this, but you want to have a background light. Now in my case, I'm sort of tweaking the rule and breaking it a bit, and I'm using the big window over here as a background light since it's sort of filling in. But as I showed you early on, I also do have that mini light over there and that can also be used as a background light since it just sort of folds in some of the little nooks and crannies a bit further 
the main thing is that you want to make it look good now you want to make sure that you are lit nice and clear you are separated from the background the background is lit differently to you you want to maybe use some warmer tones on yourself if you have like I have a dual um, temperature light or if you have some orange gels or filters that you can slide in front of your light or even some orange paper or some translucent Christmas wrapping paper that's orange stick that in front of your light make it a bit warmer and that you want to use for your main key light just so you can sort of breathe some life into your skin so yeah that basically wraps up all my tips anyway guys I hope you guys have enjoyed this video definitely leave a like down below as well as share it and tell me what you think about this series remember guys one tip I forgot to mention you don't need to buy things Remember, you have the sun, you can use it until you work yourself up to a point where you know how to use these lights, you know how to use equipment, and then go out and buy stuff. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you want to see more Red's FX action videos, leave some comments and some requests down below for stuff you want to see that's not VFX related. Check out our official Red's FX show, which is all our VFX on the end screen of this video. Leave a like down below, share, subscribe, all that jazz, turn on notifications, and I will see you guys in the next video. Stay alerted.